Hey guys, and welcome back to the Birmingham vlog uh, series, guys. And today we are here with the day number four, guys, and we are on the penultimate episode, and we are heading to Warwick Castle today. So, let's go. on the channel guys in the extra sections part of the channel. But yeah guys what from that attack I think so we've done a, a whole filling in this thing. So for now I'm just gonna take bits of it and I'll see you guys back in a My biggest claim is that my grandfather was a page in the court of Henry V. I mean a lowly page. So yes, I am the illegitimate grandson of a servant. Behold your enemy, my fellow Lancastrians. Give them all the hatred that you harbor. Yes! Yeah. 
What say you? Should I accept Henry's offer of marriage? Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps Lancaster. What say you? Yea or nay for peace? For peace! Very well, Henry. I will marry you on one condition. I cannot join Lancaster. And I will not join York. But instead I propose we build a new house. A house that unites both white, rose and red under one banner of eternal and everlasting peace. Then it is agreed. House York, House Lancaster, let me hear your battle cries now change to cheers of celebration. My lords and ladies, we have a new house. House Judah. That was even more of house it brought up. Well, that's just Royal Protest Jousting. So, uh, guys, we're now going to head over to the castle. As the next talk we're going to do is the Falcon one, but the Falconry one is at four. So, wait until then. So, now, guys, I'm going to go through the castle, maybe the castle walk, and just look more around it. So, I'll see you guys back. gas engine, regulator, a cold start oil engine, a different place existed, like it's a whole hidden place behind the castle. A water pump. So that thing there is the Milton Engine House, which only reopened in 2002. This round here is the more back part of the castle, I think. There's a guy from back round over there. Go, just go around the side of the back of the castle. In case I'll sit there in the background there, castle upwards. Are you back there because you're just coming from the floor? Yeah. Are you inside the castle now? So we're now inside of the castle. Ah, more or less the courtyard. On the Warwick Towers Trail. Just come from down there and up here. Just come from down there and up here. So now we're going to Guy Tower, which was built in 1395. That's how big it is. And all it works. Now we're going inside Guy's Tower. I'm totally going to start vlogging up the stairs. It's a good idea. In a castle with the floors are very, very thin. And I've got much space for that. Oh, I said that. Still got a long way to go. Oh, right there. Oh my god. There, up the top. Stairs. Just walked all the way to the top of Guy's Tower. There's at least a couple of hundred stairs. Now going back down the tower. 
That's where we've got to go. All the way down to there. If it wants to focus. That's where we've got to go. <sighs> Yay. Too much push on. This here's the bridge minute two. We came from all the way up there. All the way down here. I am sweating. Oh, it's so warm here. It must be like 20 degrees today. I'm sweating. Right. <sighs> almost there, almost at the end. So now we're going back up here. I'm on buddy's test to go up. Wasn't too bad. It's run out of views up here though. We're going next. Now another part of the battlements here. Man, it's getting warmer and warmer and warmer. Down there, that's the Great Hall. And that's the courtyard. So we're going back this way, back down the stairs. Down Barbican battlements. It's a very long way down. Do not jump the camera down there. It'll not be fun. Not a fantastic view, just more views of the castle. And there's where we started, where we came through into the castle. Back up over there, my. So we're going this way to Caesar's Tower. That's all. That's where I was, guys, but over there is Caesar's Tower. That's where we're going next. Caesar's Tower, built in 1350. And there's more to climb up. Fantastic. So Caesar's Tower's got quite a new stairs to quite more than the stairs. Hopefully they're a lot more safe. Can't really see much out of Caesar's Tower. Just more of the courtyard. More of the Great Hall. More of the same. This way is the exit. Fantastic. I love that. I like to see. Ow. That's a good view actually. Like that view. Back down more stairs, we've got the exiting to Caesar's Tower now. Thank God. Still a long, long way to go. But I see lights. So we just made an hour now heading towards the jail. That's cool. It's getting nice. There's one of the horses, some of what we saw in the jousting earlier. Could be some sort of blacksmiths. They make all the swords in the armor. Bowman getting ready, practicing some archery. Yeah, there you go. So. More bleeding stairs to go down. Oh, Something to the battle here. Ready? That's the castle walk done and finished. So many steps, I'm really, really tired. So now I'm about to go on one of the talks. It's going to be a knight and armor tour. So here is the great hall. All the armor and swords being kept. You're looking at a souvenir collection. By the 1800s, many of our Victorian earls loved buying things. They loved weapons and armor. So they traveled all across Europe buying whatever they wanted. And they absolutely adored weapons and armor so much, they'd managed to collect one of the biggest private collections anywhere in the shows and films to help us believe that armor is extremely heavy. A load of nonsense. Armour like this should weigh no more than 30 kilograms. Now, 30 kilograms is heavy to lift up, but to wear, no problem at all. The weight is spread across your entire body. The main problem we have for you is the amount of layers you are wearing. Armour like this normally comes in three layers. Your first layer is a thick jacket called an akaton. It's made out of horse hair normally. On top of that, You've got some male armor. On top of the male armor, you've got your plate armor. Add that all together, it's not very comfortable to wear, but also your body heat. It's going to get stuck in that. 
if you're not careful, you could quite easily sweat to death. Is by looking at the joints. Or you say, look at the knees. Depends what hits you. Like one of these. Now, swords, they are the symbol of a nut. They look good, they're expensive, but actually, they're pretty rubbish weapons and steal their arm. So again, being a knight, it's not what it's cracked up to be. It was not a fun job at all. Really, the battlefield isn't the only place we're going to find men in armor. And there's one particular tournament that these days is very popular. We do it today at Warwick Castle. Our jousting tournaments. And jousting armor is a bit different to battlefield armor. And we're quite lucky at Warwick Castle, as we have an authentic set of jousting armor from the 1500s. Just over there. So we'll head now further across to see the jousting armor is the extra layers of steel. These extra plates on the left hand side. As in the joust, you take the blow of the lance on your left hand side. You always carry your weapon in your right hand because everyone back then was right hand. But by adding all these extra layers of steel, you have added to the weight. This set of armor weighs closer to 50 kilograms. That's pretty heavy. But then again, in jousting, you just sit on the horse. It's the horse that takes most of the weight. This is what makes it jousting armor. And from the outside, all armor looks stunning. What's not often seen is what's on the other side of armor. Blackened, rough, bumping. No lord would be caught dead wearing armor looking like On and off, you simply slip it off your head. You can't really do that. The helmet is held together with a belt. The whole thing comes completely apart. But this also comes with yet another small problem. For example, lifting up the visor. You do this with your hand. That's where you get the modern day salute. If your hand is stuck there, with the visor being held, you'll see him wearing armour very similar to this. Can I go to watch the camera display? What did you call me? Come down here now. seas, discovering new lands. He saw a wondrous sight. Here in the northern lands, Hobby saw a most splendid sight. He was so excited to see it in full flight, with its massive, long, broad wings. This was to be a test for Hobby. A test of feathers, white wings, and a blazing yellow beak and talons. The sky. They were... Hobby found the Harris Hawks to be clever and great fun. He understood why they were so popular in sport and hunting. Suddenly, Hobby saw another striking looking bird flying towards him. It was a Lamagaya or a bone-eating vulture, ready to be feasted upon. This 
The bald eagle is an aggressive predator, a true hunter. It does not care how it gets its food. It will eat carrion, steal fish from other birds, or hunt for its own, often I reminded him that he also wished to see the skies above the castle fall once more with birds of prey. Both Hobby and I were rewarded. Destined to protect and care for these beautiful birds, Hobby had fulfilled the Falconer's quest. That's it, guys. We are now officially finished here at War Castle. It's time to go. That's it, guys. I am done for the day. Oh, I'm so tired. There are about 35,000 steps across the last couple of days, guys, and I'm absolutely sweating. You yeah, guys, I'm end the video off today. If you want to watch more sort of, um, of what Castle Gather did, a video about two years ago on it, so you can go watch that. I also did an extra clip where I showed almost all of the, I showed almost all of the War of the Roses Joust thing, so if you guys want to go watch that, I'll leave a link to the card and I'll also show the original War Castle video at the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the finale of this series.